So when the order to charge came, they went forward, let out a yell. They were able to carry their side of the line. They killed some enemies, captured some, and those that they captured, they treated with kindness. They would bring them water out of their canteen to try to help relieve their suffering. Finally, with their ammunition almost gone, General Burbage not sending in reinforcements, they were forced to retreat. The black soldiers left on the field were massacred. It was so bad, one black soldier with arm shot completely off. He got on a horse during the retreat. Another one shot through both lungs, but he mounted his horse. One was shot through both hips. He got on his horse. The soldiers who were left behind were shot down, some even as they lay in their hospital bed. One of the worst was a man by the name of Camp Ferguson. He went to Emory and Henry College, which was being used as a hospital place. Walked in, said, is there a man here by the name of Smith? Now, Ferguson and Smith had been friends back in Kentucky. Some say that they were even related. Camp Ferguson walked up, found Smith laying in his bed, took out his revolver, cocked a hammer, pulled a trigger, gun didn't go off. Cocked a hammer again, pulled a trigger, gun didn't go off. The third time, though, was a charm. And he shot Smith dead as he lay in his hospital bed. They would have killed more, but those who were acting as doctors and nurses in the hospital actually stood in front of them to protect some of the wounded. Ferguson was brought up on charges by the Confederates. He was arrested, but for some reason he was paroled. When the Union Army finally caught him, they hung him. Now, one of the men who was supposedly killed during the Battle of Saltville was named Julius Lee. Julius enlisted in the 5th United States Colored Cavalry on August the 18th, 1864. His owner was named Sarah Martin. She lived in Scott County, Kentucky. You all know where that is? Georgetown, Stamping Ground, my whole place, if you will. Okay. His wife was named Patsy. They had five children. Patsy was owned by a man by the name of Warren Wiley in Wolford County. When Warren found out that her husband had enlisted, he told her, you should have told your husband not to have taken up arms against white men. Patsy was out in the yard one day working in the garden when she saw a company of black soldiers walk by. She stopped to look at them, and when Warren saw her, he grabbed her, tied her arms behind her back, poured her into the kitchen, stripped her clothes off, put her head between his knees, and he beat her. He beat her so badly that she could not even put her undergarments back on because they would be filled with blood. He told her, you won't have to worry about this anymore because the next day I'm going to beat you to your death. That night, Patsy ran off. She took her youngest child and she made it to Lexington where she found Union soldiers and she related her story to them and asked to be reunited with her other four children that she had left behind. Her husband, who they thought was dead, would eventually make it back to Camp Hill. Thank you.